the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know that not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And um, my topic to, for today is uh, this is the Lord. And the problem with a man, the problem with Pharaoh was, Pharaoh didn't understand who God was. And so when um, Moses and Aaron went up to him, he told him, he said, who is the Lord? who is the Lord? And who is the Lord is a question from on the minds of so many people today. And I think that, um, well, I really believe in my heart, one of the greatest deficiencies in the church in America today is um, we do not know God. Um, I, I believe that um, it's not our doctrine or um, the amount of churches we have or all, all our programs. Is we have a we have a deficient knowledge of who God is, and I believe from that stems all the problems in America. Because we really understood who God was, we would change ourselves. And, and if the church if the church really understood who Jesus Christ was, who God the Father was, we would carry ourselves differently. Um, I'm not going to go by my notes again. But anyway. <laughs> Amen. You know, you know, there was a time when, um, when, when, um, when God first began to talk to people that people really honored God. There was a fear of God. There was an honoring of God. And, um, that's like in, the, in Israel, even though um, we say we really don't know the name of God because they, they only spoke the name of God twice a year, so we really don't know the name of God. And during the time of Jesus' ministry, after they destroyed the temple, they really didn't speak the name of God, so we really don't know the name of God. But when they did speak the name of God, they spoke it in fear and in reverence. And when they, when anything that they did concerning God, concerning His kingdom, it was a holy act, a holy work. And today, we can, uh, like I said, we can take communion and just go out and do all kind of weird things. We can sing worship songs. You know, what, what really kills me about some churches is that um, they can sing worship songs and five minutes later do the, do the, um, do the, announcements, do the announcements or collect tithes and offerings. Just supposedly was in the presence of the Lord. And the thing is, I believe that our, our deficient knowledge of who God is has caused us not to honor God for who He really is. But I'm going to read, um, let's go to Romans. Chapter 11. I'm going to show you guys something. Romans chapter 11. Romans 11. You guys hear me back there? shall the receiving of them be but light from the dead. For the first fruits be holy, the lump also is holy, and the root be holy, so are the branches. And some of the branches were broken off, thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in a market, and with them partakes of the root, and the fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, that thou boast, and thou bearest not the root, but the root of thee. Thou wilt say then, the branch are broken off, that I may be grafted in. And so when he's talking about the Gentiles, us, we are the Gentiles. 
At one time we were separated from God. At one time we were doing our own things, cut off from God. But Jesus Christ came and he allowed us to be grafted in into, to, the, to the Jewish tree, I guess. Right? And the Bible says that we were grafted into them. And so what is, should happen is we should take on the flavor of the Jewish people versus our own men. What, ha what has happened to the church, the church has turned more pagan. We've turned more Gentile. But one of the things that the Jewish people had was a reverence for God. A reverence for God and a reverence for the things of God. And, and by and large, a lot of believers do not reverence God. They, they can, uh, you, you know, I see people put stuff on their Bible. People can take, like I said, can take communion and think nothing of it. We can go to church, we can sing worship songs and think nothing of it. Because we do not reverence God. And so because we do not reverence God, I think a lot of people deceive themselves into thinking that God is at their churches or God is hearing their prayer. God is not obligated. To hear, to listen to anybody. God is not obligated. And you see, if any of you have kids in here, you are not obligated to listen to your child if your child is approaching you in a disrespectful manner. How much more God? You know, how much more God? So a lot of times we approach God in a disrespectful manner. We think that God is obligated to listen to us. God, well, we have to understand that one of his names, is, if they say it's Jehovah, it's not really Jehovah. You guys look at my big old his name in um, Exodus 6, 3, is the self-existent eternal one. Without us, God is still alive. Without God, we will all die. And so we need to begin to look at God properly. God is, is not Sam. He's not the man upstairs. He's not my co-pilot. He is Elohim all by himself. He's the almighty God. And we have fallen away from honoring God for who he is. You know what? Um, back, I got to go on my journey. But in this nation, in this nation, you must have millions of Bibles. I have, um, how much Bibles I got in the house? I got 17 Bibles in my house. Not counting the ones I'm giving away, right? My house alone have 17 Bibles. That I have nine different versions of the Bible. In America, we, we have to admit that there's a million, at least a million Bibles in America. And there's thousands upon thousands of churches in America. And so there's thousands upon thousands of pastors in America. So why is it that this nation has more people in prison than any other nation in the world. We are the greatest consumers of illicit drugs um, in, in um, any um, major city. In one year, we'll see four to 500 young gangbangers kill themselves. And this is a midst of a nation that is full of churches. And why is that? Why, why, how can that be? And I believe that if the churches did leave, we'd be in a bigger mess. But we have not honored God for God. We think he's Todd, we think he's Billy, we think he's somebody that needs our money, that if we don't pray, God's going to be in a fret, that if we don't go to church, God will be confused. And so we talk about God, we are, we are more, this is true for a lot of fellowships. If, let's say that President Barack Obama said he was going to come to, maybe he was going to pick a church on this island to come to, everybody would be doing the best they could to get him to come to their church. But see, God... God. We do not put as much effort into getting God to appear in our fellowship. We will we will dishonor God before we dishonor Governor Lingo and Lieutenant Governor Iona because we want them to come. So God is more or less way down the road. It would be nice if God comes. See, we make like we want God to come. When in reality, we really don't want God to come. So that's why we do so many different things in our church. I'm not even on my notes. I'm going to try to stay on my notes, though. But the thing is that we need to become a God-honoring people. And the way that we can become a God-honoring people is to see God for who He is. A lot of people that made up a God in their own minds, they read certain scriptures about God and they put them together and they created a God. And so it's not really the God of the Bible. The God that you can tell what to do is not the God of the Bible. The God that you can command what to do is not the God of the Bible. The God that needs your money is not the God of the Bible. The God, is the, the God that accepts everything and say, well, you know, uh, God understands my heart and he knows this and that. The God that is so lenient towards sin is not the God of the Bible. The God that does, that does, does not demand you to be able to hold yourself in your life is not the God of the Bible. And so in America, by and large, we are serving the God that is not the Bible. And so we wonder why, um, we wonder why um, in the church, the Worst rate in the church is the same as outside of the church. Why um, we make excuses for people? <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've heard. 